last video on the DMAIC process was all about how to define a problem that you can improve. Now we're going to look at what comes next. It's the measure phase. As you might guess, the purpose of the measure phase is to establish and document the process being improved. Now part of that includes getting baseline measurements. Among your objectives in this phase, gathering data that will validate and quantify the problem. And out of the many tools available in the Lean Toolbox, the process map is the primary one that you will use. Now, a process map illustrates the steps of the process. It details the inputs and outputs of each step and gives the team an opportunity to discover improvements. Some guidelines to use when beginning a process map are have a well-defined problem statement in the charter, create as a team and involve the process owners, ask questions and walk the process to really see the sequences of activities. In doing so, look for the eight types of waste. Document the as-is state of the process. When you look at how things run currently, answer questions like how much, how many, or how long. If you can't see how things are done today, how can you improve them? To help you create a process map, here are five steps to guide you. First, identify the steps in this process, otherwise called your process steps. Again, Remember to walk your process and gather data on how much, how many, and or how long. In step two, list all the outputs of each process step. In step three, list all the inputs required to create the output of each process step. With step four, you classify the process inputs as either critical, controllable, standard operating procedure, or noise. Critical, X, means the inputs are statistically controllable. Controllable, C, is where the inputs have a direct relationship to the overall success of the output. Standard operating procedures, S, are inputs that represent the generally accepted practices of the process. And with noise, N, you're dealing with inputs that are difficult, expensive, or impossible to control. Finally, in step five, you identify each process step as either value-added or non-value-added. The value-added steps must meet the criteria of all three C's. The first C stands for customer cares. Are you doing things that the customer actually cares about? When was the last time you asked the customer about his or her needs? C number two is for changes. It transforms information or materials. Are you physically changing the thing or information? The third C stands for correct, meaning done right the first time. Let's walk through each step of creating a process map. Here's a very simple example of a lunch order to delivery. In step one for this example, the process steps are to prepare the raw ingredients, make the order, and package and deliver the order. Notice how each process step begins with a verb. As we walk the process, the data we've collected shows that to prepare the raw ingredients takes two hours of time with a five-day inventory of raw ingredients. To make the order takes five minutes with 15 minutes of rework. And to package and deliver the order takes two minutes. It's important to note that 25% of all orders are returned by customers. In step two of creating a process map, you list all the outputs for each process step. In our example, the first step is to prepare food. Its output is to have clean and chopped raw ingredients. The second process step is to make the order, which means the output of this step is the cooked food. And the last step in our process map is to package and deliver the order. The output here would be a plated or properly packaged meal, ready to be eaten. For step three, you list all the inputs required to create the output of each process step. Some of the key inputs from our example are chef, customer order and raw ingredients from the prepare process step. The recipe from the make process step is another input. There's also the customer comment card from the package and deliver process step. In step four, you classify the process inputs as either critical, controllable, standard operating procedure, or noise. 
From our previous input examples, chef input would be classified as noise, customer order and raw ingredient inputs would be classified as controllable, recipe input would be classified as standard operating procedure, the customer comment card would also be classified controllable. Step five is to identify each process step as either value added or non-value added. For our example, all three process steps just happen to be value added because they meet all criteria of the three C's. Now this is not typical for most processes. Once you've completed a detailed process map, key controllable and or critical inputs will become apparent. These controllable or critical inputs are the starting point for actions that you'll take in the next DMAIC phase. Next stop, analyze.